everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and welcome to this week's interactive read aloud. Because it is now the season of fall, and if you take a look in my background, I have our fall leaves out. I have a very fun fall themed, Halloween themed read aloud for you. Now, my friends, what do you like about the season fall? Right, well, I know fall is the season of apples and pumpkins, some really delicious treats like apple cider, apple donuts, pumpkin pie, apple sauce, all sorts of delicious things. And it's also when the weather sometimes gets a little cooler, colder, depending where you are. That's why I have my scarf on. Is it cold where you are, my friends? What's the weather like where you are? Oh, wow. Well, if it's cold, you can snuggle up. If it's still hot outside, then don't worry about this scarf. But maybe it will start getting a little cooler because it's fall. Well, my friends, I'm all ready to get started and jump in on this week's Read Aloud. So give me a boo if you're ready to go like a ghost. Ready? Three, two, one. Boo! Excellent. Let's get started. The reason I had you say boo to get started is because the title of this week's interactive Read Aloud is How to Make Friends with a Ghost. Written and illustrated by Rebecca Green. So I see only one name on the cover here, which means Rebecca Green is the author and the illustrator. And what does the author of a book do, my friends? They write all the words. And what does the illustrator do? They draw all the pictures we are about to see. Now, how to make friends with the ghosts, my friends. What do you know about ghosts? Yeah. And would you like to be friends with a ghost? <laughs> if you were friends with a ghost, what would you do? Wow. Well, my friends, we are going to be reading in this story about how to make friends with a ghost. If you ever find a ghost, here's how you can become friends. And I think you'll realize that not all ghosts are scary. Ghosts can be pretty friendly, too. Let's take a quick look at the cover and tell me, what do you notice? Right, I see it does look like the season fall. I see the leaves are all falling from the trees. I notice there's a little girl. She's also wearing a scarf because it's cold. And oh, this must be her ghost friend. And my friends, does that look like a friendly ghost or a scary ghost? That ghost looks pretty friendly to me, doesn't it? It's got a little smile, little rosy red cheeks. My friends, how do you imagine ghosts look like? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that this little girl and this little ghost might become friends. Double thumbs up if you're ready to start. Let's get started. Ooh, I wanted to show you these pages real quick. These are called the end papers. They're the pages like right after the cover. And these are just really fun because these ones have all these fall things on it and Halloween things. What do you see? Right, leaves, cauldrons for like potions, Bats, worms, spiders, spooky. So here's our title page. Has the title of our book, How to Make Friends with a Ghost. Our author and illustrator, Rebecca Green, published by Tundra Books. And here I see, oh, what do you notice? Looks like the little girl and the little ghost from the cover laughing. Like they're having fun, like they're friends. Hmm. If you've ever been frightened, scared by a ghost, the thought of becoming friends with one might seem awfully scary. What do you think, my friends? Are you scared to be friends with a ghost or do you want to be friends with a ghost? But I assure you, so don't worry, let me tell you. Ghosts are sweet creatures and they need friends too. And who better to befriend them than you? Ooh, you could be a special ghost friend. This helpful guide will show you how to create a lifelong and beyond friendship with a ghost. So this book is going to be a guide. It's going to teach us how to become friends with a ghost. A friendship that will last a lifetime and beyond. What does that mean, a lifetime and beyond? Even after your life? So here's the introduction to our little guide to how to become friends with a ghost. Ghosts are tricky to track down, so it is advisable, so I recommend that you do not try to look for one. Oh. Most of the time when a person thinks they have found a ghost, they have not. See figure one, figure two, figure three. So figure one, figure two, figure three are these three different pictures down here. So sometimes people think they saw a ghost, but actually 
What do they see? What do you think? So figure one, either they saw a costume child, a kid in a costume, so not a real ghost. Or they had dusty camera lens, figure two, so they thought they got a picture, but it's just dust on their camera. Or figure three, oh, they think it's a ghost, but it's actually it's just a towel on a doorknob. Mm. So how do you find a ghost, my friends? If you don't look for one, how do you find one, do you think? However, Dr. Fantonius Spookle, ooh, leading ghost expert and poet, writes this. So he's a ghost expert, and he says this is how you find one. A ghost is nearly impossible to find. Um, you can look till your face turns blue. But if you're a person who is sweet, warm, and kind, a ghost may come out and find you. Oh, so you can't find ghosts, but they find you. But only if you're sweet, warm, and kind, my friends. Are you sweet, warm, and kind? Can you give me an example of how you're sweet, warm, and kind? Maybe a ghost might come find you. If you think you have been found by a ghost, use this handy classification guide to make sure the creature in question is, in fact, a ghost. So there's this little star next to guide, which means that there's a little star at the bottom, an asterisk that's going to give me more information. From the archives of the Department of Paranormal Classification at the Society of Supernatural Studies. That was a lot of big words, but supernatural studies means studying things that some people think don't exist, like ghosts. So this guide comes from that place where they study ghosts and other animals, maybe like unicorns, dragons, fairies. So this is how you can tell if it's a real ghost. So I see this ghost picture, and there are these little labels that tell us what to look for. So let's see. A ghost has a small mouth, but eats a lot. Ooh. A healthy ghost has rosy cheeks. Oh, so if you see a ghost, check its cheeks. A ghost has arms, oh, but no fingers. Mm. And their body is transparent, my friends. Can you say transparent? Transparent means you can see through it. So their body's transparent, you can see through it, and it even glows a little bit. And they have a wavy bottom. So at the bottom, they're wavy for mobility so that they can move and float around. And it shifts in size, so its size changes, but it's usually about two feet tall. So not very big, my friends, two feet tall. And finally, they have great eyesight and can see in the dark, which makes sense, right? Because ghosts should be able to see in the dark. So if you see a ghost and it has all these things, I think you found a real ghost. All right, now that you have your ghost, part one, ghost basics. So it looks like this little girl found a ghost. It's a real ghost, and let's see what you do with a ghost now. Do's and don'ts. So what to do and what not to do with your ghost. Although you might be frightened, scared when a ghost greets you, do not run. Ghosts are very sensitive creatures. That means that their feelings get hurt easily. And why might their feelings get hurt if you run? Right? Because they're just trying to be friends, not be scary. So if you see a ghost, don't run away. What do you think you should do instead? Hmm. Instead, simply smile and tell the ghost your name. Oh, practice, my friends. Pretend there's a ghost in front of you. What should you do? Smile and tell them your name. Hi, my name is Maya. Hmm. Once the ghost knows you are friendly, it will most likely follow you. Welcome the ghost into your home, and if it's reluctant, if it doesn't want to go, a simple blow will get the ghost inside, <laughs> right? Because if you blow it, it just flows right in. Warning though, never put your hand through a ghost. It can cause a serious tummy ache. So ghosts are transparent. You can see through them. They Also, you can put your hand through them, right? Because they're not solid because they don't have a body like a human, right? They're floating. So just because you can put your hand through it, should you? Because what can happen? Gives it a tummy ache. Imagine, it's not very comfortable if someone's putting their hand through you. Ouch. Part two, ghost care. So now that it's in your house, how can you take care of it? My friends, how do you think you have to take care of a ghost? What do you need to do? Hmm. Feeding. Ghosts love to snack. One sure way to a ghost's heart is to fix its favorite treat. And what do you see here, my friends? What do ghosts like to eat? Oh, some creepy things, huh? They like cinnamon dusted insects, bugs, moldy toast. It looks like they have a jar of mold to rub on it. Earwax, truffles, or oh, mud tarts and pickled boogers. Oh, my friends, do any of those sound good to you? If you had to try one, which one would you want to eat? 
Ooh, I might try maybe cinnamon dusted insects. I like cinnamon. Chances are your ghost will want to help you in the kitchen. I suggest making floating spaghetti and mud balls together. So here's actually a recipe of how to cook floating spaghetti and mud balls if you were with your ghost. Here's something you and your ghost could make. So it seems like you need one cup of dried witch hair, two cups of creek water, three-fourths cup of mud, any variety, half a cup of tomato sauce, two teaspoons of spider egg parmesan. Oh, and then it has directions of how to do it, my friends. If you want to pause and read more about this recipe and how to make floating spaghetti with mud balls, check it out. I also recommend these other tasty dishes. So what other dishes do you see that goes eat? Right, musty biscuits with toe jam, monster mashed potatoes, dead leaf salad with boutons instead of croutons, thunderstorm soup, and spider web sushi. Ooh. For these and more recipes, see my book, Superstitious and Nutritious, Wacky Snackies for Your Ghost. So if you want to learn about other foods to feed your ghost, check out this wacky snacky book. Hmm. Activities. So what should you do with your ghost, my friends? What do you think ghosts like to do for fun? Ah, oh, let's see. Take your ghost for a walk in the woods. Ghosts love to collect leaves, acorns, and worms. Ooh, my friends, what do you love to collect? If you have a ghost, you can collect these things. Leaves, acorns, worms. Read scary stories together. Ghosts love to read. I suggest Tales of the Living by Mortal Beings. <laughs> by Mortal Beings. Mortal Beings like means people who are alive. Mortals and beings, beings like humans. <gasps> so, scary stories for a ghost are Tales of the Living. You know how humans are scared of Tales of the Dead. To ghosts, it's Tales of the Living. That's kind of funny. And tell jokes to your ghost. They love to giggle. For example, knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo, hoo. Why are you crying? <laughs> Get it like boo, like a ghost. That's a silly one. My friends, do you know any ghost jokes? Go ahead and tell one. Tell a ghost joke. <laughs> you would make great friends with a ghost. And of course, take your ghost trick-or-treating on Halloween. Everyone will think it's just a ghost costume. And then throw a dance party. Ghosts love to groove to creepy music. I recommend Spooky Jams by the Spiders. Ooh, my friends, can you dance like a ghost? Show me your best ghost dance. Ooh, I'm imagining it's kind of like floating. <sighs> if you had a ghost, what music would you play your ghost? Very fun. Now bedtime. Give your ghost a bedtime bath. I suggest water in a cauldron. So a cauldron is this right here. It looks like what witches use to make potions. And blowing your own bubbles. Putting your ghost to bed every night will ensure we'll make sure that it sleeps soundly with plenty of nightmares. Ghosts love nightmares. Oh, that's funny, right? Do people like nightmares? Not as much. People like dreams instead, right? And make your ghost a cozy bed. Try laying down moss in the darkest corner of the attic. You can also make a canopy like a cover out of spider webs. Ooh, so that's what ghosts like to sleep in. All cozy and moss and spider webs. My friends, what's the coziest part of your bed? Your blankets or your stuffies. Ghosts love to be sung to. Instead of words, try singing to them in eerie hums and wails. So eerie means spooky. So if you want to sing your ghost a good night song, you would sing. Ooh. My friends, you try. Can you sing a ghost good night song? Scary sounds and wails. Ooh. Ooh. Hiding spots. Hmm. Others might be wary around your ghost. They might be a little scared about your ghost. So it's best to find good hiding spots for your ghost. Hmm. Where do you think a good hiding spot for a ghost would be? Hmm. Oh, what do you notice here? Where is the ghost hiding? In a tissue box. You can hide your ghost in a tissue box. Why is that a good hiding spot? Because ghost is white like a tissue. Or hide your ghost in your sock drawer. It's also a great place for napping. You can even hide your ghost in the refrigerator because ghosts love to be cold. <gasps> Do you see the ghost? Yeah, where is it? In the milk carton, right? That's a good place to blend in. Hmm. Oh, 
hazards, so these means things that are dangerous for your ghost. Do not let your ghost be used as a tissue, though. Even though it's hiding in the tissue box, make sure no one uses it. Booger removal is never easy. Ouch. For cleaning tips, see my book from ghosts to ghost grooming tips for your ghost. So if you want to know how to clean your ghost, you can check out that other book. Also, do not let your ghost help with the laundry. So if it's in your sock jar, make sure you don't put it in the laundry with the rest of your socks. What happens if your ghost goes in the laundry? Right? It's all kind of fluffy, right? And soaked and wet. Also, do not let your ghost get eaten. So if it's hiding in the fridge, make sure it doesn't get eaten, though. Others can mistake ghosts for food items such as eggs, whipped cream, sour cream, and marshmallows. Oops. Oh, don't want to eat a ghost. My friends, do you think you've ever accidentally eaten a ghost? Check those marshmallows before you start eating them next time. Part Three, so growing together. So you learned how to meet the ghost, how to take care of the ghost, and now you're going to grow up together because you're friends for life and beyond. Growing up. When you move to a new home, make sure it's not already haunted. Ghosts do not like competitions. Make sure there's no other ghosts in that house. You only need one ghost. And when you start working, you still have to make time for your ghost. My friends, so when you grow up and you get a job, or even if you're just going to school, make sure you still make time for your ghost. I suggest a take your ghost to work day or maybe take your ghost to school day. Hmm. And when you start a family of your own, my friends, and maybe have your own little ones, your ghost will love the little mini versions of you too. Note, ghosts love to play peekaboo. <laughs> wow, my friends, if I had a ghost forever, I would want it to meet my little babies too. And growing old. So now that girl's an old lady. And look. Ghost is still with her, and what are they doing together? One of Ghost's favorite activities. What is it? Finding acorns and worms and leaves. You will get old, but your ghost never will, right? Because ghosts don't get older. They're already dead. It will still want to collect leaves, acorns, and worms. So that's good. You can still go on walks together. And if your eyes can no longer see because you're old and sometimes your eyes don't work as well, your ghost will still be there to read to you. <gasps> Ooh, and looks like, what is he reading? Scary stories. And even if you can't remember jokes, your ghost can. And it will be there to make you laugh. What a good friend is always there for you, no matter what. And, oh, what do you notice in this picture, my friends? Well, what is going on before I read it? Oh, I recognize that bow. That bow looks like the bow the girl used to wear a lot. And where are they? They're in a graveyard. The setting's in a graveyard where you bury someone. What do you think is happening? The best part about making friends with a ghost is that you'll have the sweetest friend forever. According to Dr. Fantonia Spooky, if you've been lucky enough to be found by a ghost that calls you its friend, then your friendship will last, for it knows no bounds. You'll be friends even after the end. So even after, my friends, the end, after you die, you're still friends with your ghost. Now you're just a ghost too. And now you can be friends forever because now you're both ghosts. What do you think two ghosts might do together to have fun? All sorts of things, right? Do you think they'll find another human to make friends with? Maybe, but maybe they just have each other, right? The end. My friends, what a sweet little story about making friends with a ghost. I don't know about you, but now I really want to find a ghost friend. What do you think, my friends? Now, how do you feel? Would you want to make friends with a ghost? And after reading this book, my friends, what are some things you would do with your ghost friend? All right, there are so many things to do with your ghost and many things you need to do to take care of your ghost friend. But even though it might be maybe a lot of work to take care of your ghost, it'll be fun. And then you'll have a friend forever for your whole life and beyond. Oh, what was your favorite part about this book? Yeah, there were so many good parts. Well, my friends, we talked a little bit about what you would do with your ghost if you had a ghost friend, and that leads us right into this week's craft inspired by the story, where you will get to write down and share about and draw about what you would do if you were friends with a ghost and how you would make friends with a ghost. Are you ready? Let's check it out. 
So for this week's craft, we have these little pop-up ghost crafts inspired by this story. And if you notice, these little ghosts look like the ghosts from How to Make Friends with a Ghost from the book. As always, there is a black and white version or a color printed version that already has some colors like the little rosy cheeks. And what's cute about these is that these little ghosts pop up. And on the inside, you get to record and share how you would take care of your ghost if you had a ghost friend. So this one here, you'll notice says how... Joji or how Maya or how your name makes friends with a ghost just like the title and then it pops up and it has different things for you to fill in and this one has a lots of space for pictures and labels so like a combination like what would you feed your ghost what would you do together where could they hide how would you get ready for bed and then you can drop pictures and label and then it closes back up and then woo, it lifts back up like a wiggly ghost. This version, and again, the versions are available in both color and black and white, but this one has more writing spaces for you, and it has the same different sections, like what would you eat, activities, places to hide, and bedtime, except it has little sentences for you to fill in to share your details. So if you like writing more, this one is for you. And this one says, if I had a ghost friend, so different labels, of course. So if you're interested in making your own little paper ghost friends and sharing how you would take care of them, then check out this craft on my blog. The links can be found down below. And if you do make your ghost crafts, my friends, please reach out to me and share them. I love seeing your activities and hearing about your own reading adventures. So to reach out to me, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, on the blog, on YouTube, on TikTok. I'm there now too. And on all the social media links can be found down below. You can email me also and send me pics or any details about you. All right, my friends. Well, thank you for joining me on this spooky but super sweet read aloud, interactive read aloud. I love chatting with you about the story, hearing about what you would do with your ghost friends, and I hope that you have a happy start to your fall season. All right. Well, make sure to subscribe to my Storybooks YouTube channel to keep up with all of our interactive read alouds. But until next time, stay safe and healthy. Happy fall and happy reading.